grows out of uh, our good friend woman uh, having this uh, offering us this chance to bring her here she came to America and her journey then over the last two and a half or so decades uh, has been uh, fascinating and uh, sometimes I think unexpected she worked with the likes of Kronos Quartet uh, and Philip Glass she uh, is one of the founding members of the Silk Road Ensemble with Yo-Yo Ma, which she remains an active part of. But one of the interesting turns came uh, just over a decade ago when she decided to begin returning back to China 
and seeking out some of the rural, regional uh, folk music traditions in China that had not been a part of her classical training. Uh, and so tonight's performance uh, will include uh, collaborations with uh, people that she has brought here from. Uh, in this instance, uh, rural Shanxi province, the sort of far southeast corner of Shanxi, just where the Yellow River bends. Uh, and uh, she's brought with her uh, folk musicians from that region who will give you a very sort of distinctive, uh, I think, and hard to find, hard to, uh, well, maybe even endangered uh, variety of Chinese music. Um, she has described that music uh, several times as China's own ancient rock and roll. That will be later. We're going to begin with just Wu Man and her wonderful instrument, the pipa. Please join me in welcome.
born in Hangzhou, which is near Shanghai, urban city, kind of you know elegant. And I training my training background is in Beijing in conservatory. So all the years I've been you know in the conservatory sort of prestigious place, but in some way. I, you know, although I play the traditional music, this is an instrument, but somehow isolated in, in many ways. So I really didn't know about what is really folk music in China. When I first time to see them, watch their play, it's so real. It's just nothing fake. It's everything is real. They put their energy 100%. To me, because we sometimes feel like we're sort of a polished, staged musician, concert music. <laughs> but they're kind of, there's, this is their life. That's the difference. So to me, it really moved me. I really, so I said, okay, I want to work with them. I really wanted to learn. I really wanted to, in that kind of elements in my music. My name is Zhang Ximin. I'm 72 years old. I'm a young man. 陕西、华阴、方川村老乡是过去玩平野河的时候看的人都比较少了well, the shadow puppets, it's always kind of, to me, kind of like a dream. <laughs> when I was little, um, just fascinating by the shadow puppets. Uh, of course, there are a lot of Southeast Asia and, and you know, Malaysia or Indonesia, and they all have shadow puppets. But in China, in particular in the northern part of China, they have quite few shadow puppet group exist there, not in Shanxi, but also in Gansu, in Shandong area. Um, but particular Hua Ying, that area, it's, it, to me, it's because of the music attract me a lot. Um, the Lao Qiang, it's so dramatic.
常幸运，今年六十三岁。我的爷爷、他亲爷都是常幸的。跟我父亲，我是从小学的，其实是我二爷教我。我是五六年的二爷，到北京这儿，是我二爷那个喊的时间多些。是我二爷，我父亲根本不让我学这。那个时候，常幸的人是爹，都连媳妇都娶不到手。在干些当股长帮我们，从台子里不台里，街坊都不台外去，拿皮筋扯掉当人成下的干部。这是我家有一百多本剧本，最早就乾隆时候剧本，乾隆清清代的剧本，乾隆嘉庆的光绪一百多本，这经过考察以后。We wanted to share with not only American audience, we want to also remind the Chinese as well. This is tradition. This is a part of over 1,000 years old Chinese tradition. And we don't want to forget about it. And hopefully, after this tour, we want to hope people, younger generation, will carry on. This is such a cool cool tradition. It's really rock and roll. Come on. <laughs>
这阵傻笑，王登天啊，悠悠山府又往来。